Okay, good morning. I think today is... I think today is February 15th. And it's going to be about... I think it's about 10 a.m. in the morning here in Fort Worth. Uh, I think it's going to be 50 something today, which is not bad. I decided I should make a uh, walking and talking video. This won't be very exciting. I'm just going to walk over to the uh, office and leave mail to go out. This is an apartment complex and the mailboxes are all down at the uh, at the office. That's also where the water heater, one they have one, you know, boiler that uh, so, so we're sort of at the far end of the uh, apartment complex. Water cools down, hot water cools down a little bit before it gets to us. I'm using my uh, Panasonic LX7. It is uh, pocket size. It's a great little camera. I think they're up to, the last I heard they were up to like the LX10, but I basically do, you know, doing everything on, you know, the preset. Really don't need to upgrade since they're so expensive, you know. And really now everybody's going to uh, using cell phones because the cell phones and the, you know the lenses and the especially the software are making for some fantastic ability. And you always have your cell phone with you. I own two other Panasonic Panasonic cameras. The newest one is the LX7, but you know you don't always have them with you, especially since I don't own a car. If you know, if I had a car, I might have the camera in a camera bag or something in the car. But I'm not going to go be walking around or taking the uh, bus. Cell phone seems like the way to go. I'm not sure if you can hear me because of the wind. Oh, the mail lady just got here. Or mail person. Oh, really, the weather has been pretty mild. Of course, I think, what was it? Uh, the Weather Bureau say that warmest January or something in 178 years or something. I'm not sure if I can't remember now if that was for the United States or North America or I, I know it wasn't just for Texas, you know. Okay. I don't want to invade somebody's privacy, so I'll stop this for now and then restart it, maybe. Okay. I'm back. I started recording on the way back, but I was in the sunlight, and I don't think I... because the camera shut down after a little bit, so I obviously did not have it started. Uh, I think this has started. There's no light on the front to tell me. It doesn't have a uh, LED screen that, you know, swings out for doing selfies or seeing what you're seeing. So I hope everything is set correct. Uh, I really have not uh, utilized these cameras as I should. I haven't learned, you know, uh, what to do. You know, there's a shutter release button, which will start the video recording. 
There's also the red button, which also starts the video recording. And maybe I knew at one time. I'm not sure. I think the red button then utilizes. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, if it uses. Like if. If I go in, you know, you have the screen mode, like you can pick portrait mode and different, you know, daylight, uh, sunrise, sunset, fireworks, all that type of stuff. I'm not sure if you push the red button if you get those, or if you get uh, your, you know, function one, two, or three, whatever they call those keys or whatever that you programmed in. I'm not sure, so no telling what kind of. It's just, I think I might have known it one time. There's a guy on YouTube, Graham Hutchinson, is it? He's in the UK, and he especially makes excellent videos on, uh, well, a bunch of different, but he especially, you know, especially like Panasonic cameras, and he's done it. I think he's done an entire book, which you can also download, you know, pay and download or whatever. On different, you know, like the LX7 and the uh, G7 and all those type of stuff. Great. I'll put the link below if I can remember it to his. So. Well, I made it home from the. It's terrible to get old. I made it home from the mailbox. Excuse me. Been watching a bunch of. Uh, I go through things on YouTube. Been watching a bunch of car chases. You know, police car chases or whatever. And I get pissed off watching. You know, watching them. I kind of thinking they just ought to shoot the person. Really, it would be. I'm sure it's going to come. Especially with you know electric cars, battery-operated cars or whatever, and I'm sure they're working on it. They need to come up with something. It, I don't know if it'd be too expensive to put in every police car, but you know something that he goes in a car and fires out some type of electronic pulse or whatever, and disables the electrical system and just shuts it down. Uh, Like, and of course, I don't know now after, you know, like some car, some police cars have, you know, the uh, equipment in them and they can just be driving along, drive through parking lots, whatever, and the officer doesn't have to get on the radio and run a license tag or whatever. The cameras on the car, the police car, are just scanning and will pop up that, pop up the information or whatever, warrant, you know, or whatever, that would be pretty neat. I wouldn't mind doing that. Um, used to be, too, that the law enforcement assistant, I think that was at the federal government, I think that was, gave uh, police departments money for the officer and paid for the car and for the traffic, uh, but I remember a small town of, I think, thirty to 60,000. They, I know they had one officer, so his, he was getting his pay from, you know, I'm sure the federal government didn't send him a you know, paycheck, but the police department paid him, and the deal was that, uh, you know, they got the car for free. And the salary, basically, 80% of the guy's salary or officer's salary. But he had to do, maybe it was 100% of his salary, but he had to do 80%, you know, traffic. You know, looking for DWIs, uh, speeders, and that type of stuff in order to cut down on that. And then a, a small town where I was a reserve police officer for 10 years or whatever, they, uh, 
when I started out, all we had were reserve officers. And then later, we, they started, you know, we started adding, you know, first, first we just got a dispatcher, and then later we got one midnight shift officer and so on. But eventually the uh, town got a, I don't think it was any salary, maybe so, but they got a car for drug enforcement or, or for educating a DAR or whatever, drug, uh, whatever. And the officer went to schools and talked, you know, and, and so the, you know, the city got a new car for that. What I missed out on, I was, I, I turned down every, all the time, and finally they stopped asking me, but I couldn't afford to go to, uh, pay was too low. Uh, but uh, the, I'm not sure if it was the city or probably the federal government, I mean it wasn't the city, and I don't think it was the state, so it had to be federal government again, gave the city a a car, you know, red lights, sirens in Missouri, it was red lights, you know, blue lights in Missouri were for uh, fire departments and volunteer firemen, whatever. Uh, so it was red lights, siren, and computer and the equipment to set off the uh, sirens for tornadoes and what have you. And uh, I went in, you know, in the very beginning I went in like once a week and did my, well, every, every week I did my patrol. I, for years, I every, every day, every night I did my, and when we finally got full-time officer, I would stay over hours into his midnight shift so he'd have a backup, although I didn't have backup, you know, because I'd come in like at 7 p.m. and I could have quit at any, you know, I could quit at midnight or one, but he came on at midnight or something, I'd stay over till three or four. Uh, but uh, anyway, they, they gave him this car. Well, anyway, so like I normally went in once a week and then had to go in for court. Then you're always having to go in for training. And But uh, a lot of the reserve officers would just pop into the police station, you know, all the time. And I didn't. But so I kind of missed out on. I, I wish then that I had been popping in to see what was going on, because I went in and the chief of we had by that time we had a chief of police, and he said, uh, "Well, we we got this car and Officer so and so wanted it, so he's going to be the uh, civil defense, you know, whatever." And I, and I didn't say anything. I thought that's the job. I I mean the uh, that's <laughs> because I was. I was in, when I was in high school, I was in civil defense, the Ground Observer Corps. When the Ground Observer Corps was, well, anyway, I was in, we did light rescue. I did light rescue. I was trained by the state of Missouri uh, to be a radiological monitor when the nuclear war happened or whatever. I would be, I guess, the first one to go out and come back and glowing or whatever, tell the people it's safe to go out or not safe to go out. And so anyway, when the Ground Observer Corps and the Air Force did away with the Ground Observer Corps, we were the first, well, the Weather Bureau told us we were the first trained weather observers. And uh, I'm not sure if that was for Kansas City, Missouri, or because it seems to me like this has been like 1959. Well, I know on the, t because we had a tornado hit or whatever, I know at that time, uh, some police officer or whatever would uh, look up and see some uh, clouds or whatever and call in that he saw a tornado and they, you know, there was. so maybe we were the first train for that Kansas City, would it? but anyway, I mean, so, and then for years, for after that, you know, an amateur radio operator uh, trained, you know, every year for, and then the hospital that I worked for uh, 30 years hospital security, we were trained, uh, you know, so far as the hospital was concerned, what to do when storms and then the hospital, we put them into code gray and then uh, we had to go around to the, take video, you know, around each one of the, 
units and get the nurses to watch this thing. You know what to do for what to do for her for hurricanes and tornadoes and all that kind of stuff. I of course you know all of us had to go through it, and I was like I didn't say anything, but I thought you know. I, and I had to, if I didn't, you know, sign off the book that I watched the video, then we had to take the video around to the nurses and have them watch it and then check them off the list. But anyway, I thought, oh man, I would have loved to. That would have been like the culmination of all that, you know, that I had done if uh, but somebody else got it. I'm sure that person didn't. Uh, but I also knew in a way that there was going to be, and I don't know that there was, but the police department got this vehicle and the fire department, and that at that time that was a volunteer fire department, State Fire Protection District, and they argued with the city of, with the fire chief of the city, because there was an overlap in the state fire protection over into that city, and so the uh, fire uh, chief of fire chief for the state fire protection. He, okay, this I'm, I'm state, so I have jurisdiction and over that area, you know. And the fire chief for the city. Uh, this is a city, you know, incorporated and then on and whatever. And I could just see that uh, that. Uh, that might not work out very well, and I didn't want to be in the middle of. So I was. I think I told you that story. I was sort of in the middle of. I'll tell it again, real quick, not the whole story. Uh, when I first moved to that area, we, my wife and I bought a house there, and uh, I checked with the uh, city of Belton to see if I could uh, get a. Uh, Reserve Commission or something like that, and the chief would be oh no no because you're a security officer and then and that time it was in Kansas City Missouri you know I said oh that you know shouldn't you know. and so then I uh, heard that the Raymore had a fire you know uh, volunteer fire department so I volunteered for that so I was going through the training with a bunch of other guys. And uh, Roots was that's when Roots was first uh, uh, out on television, and we were in our training or whatever, and everybody was watching Roots, and this was the last day, and I was still not still in the training, and these other guys were in the training, and uh, the tone went off, and so I had I wasn't authorized to use you know blue lights and siren or whatever. And usually, I, I don't think I ever made it to the fire station because I had to pull out onto a busy, a busy road, um, and I wasn't about to, you know, go through a stop that didn't have, didn't, you know. <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, the tone went off, and it was the last episode of Roots, and uh, I got to the fire station. It was a fire chief and me which was unusual. And so we went out, it didn't turn out to be anything that I can't remember, it didn't matter, you know. Thank God it wasn't something, you know. Uh, so we go back to the uh, fire station and put the truck up and everything and then, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, an important part. I found out when I was going through the training for the fire department there that they had a reserve police department in Raymore, and uh, they had no full-time officers. And so I applied and I uh, went through the training and was approved and uh, was patrolling, you know, one day a week. So anyway, well anyway, we uh, go to the fire station and uh, were there and the Raymore Reserve officer called in on the radio to the dispatch. How many firefighters responded on that fire? 
And uh, she said, I, I don't know. Anyway, the, I was with the fire chief there, and he says, God damn, blankety blank, 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 none of his blankety blank business or whatever. And so I was like, I wasn't mad or upset or, you know, anything. And I decided, oh, this is awkward. And I didn't know, what should I say? By the way, chief, I, I'm not upset. No problem, I'm not going to repeat to anybody what you said or anything, because no big deal. Uh, but I didn't, you know, I was just like, this is awkward and it's going to come back, sure enough. So then, uh, all of us are waiting to get our, and by then I didn't want to be, but I mean, I, was, I went through the training and I didn't want to be a firefighter, uh, volunteer firefighter. So but all the guys are like the little group, you know, why haven't we got our permits? Why haven't and I thought, I got an idea. I didn't say anything, you know. And then sure enough, uh, well, we had our fire department meeting. And uh, the fire chief is up there, okay, all of you guys, no excuses. No excuses. The homecoming is, I think it was a homecoming, is coming up. All of you will have a sign post, and that's where you're going to be, and that's it. So and so, so you know, goes through the list. Uh, okay, you'll be at the first aid set up place. You know, you and you and you and, and I forget. Then he called me on. Okay, you're going to be such and such, and I said, uh, Chief, sorry, I can't make it. Why not? Why can't you make it? And I said, I'll be at the uh, homecoming, uh, working. You know, as a uh, Raymore police officer, and his face got red, and then he went over and was talking to the dispatcher who dispatched for both the fire department and the police department, and they were looking at me, and then, anyway, I got called in, not by the chief, you know, a few days later, but by the, the chief was really nice. All those firefighters were, you know, really nice. Um, but I got called in by the assistant chief, who was a really nice guy. I think people who do volunteer, you know, who volunteer, especially for something like that, I think are generally nicer people. He called me and he says, oh, Jim, we uh, we got a problem here, you know. We found out that, you know, you're a, a Raymore, you know, reserve officer and everything, and you can't be a, uh, you know, a uh, police officer and a firefighter at the same time. And, of course, I didn't want to be at that point, but I had to screw with him a little bit, you know. I said, why not? And he said, well, when there was a fire and you'd showed up, you would show up, we wouldn't know you if you were there as a police officer or a firefighter. And I said, well, if I show up with a gun, I'm a police officer. If I show up with an axe, I'm a firefighter. And he said, oh, you know, so I didn't tell him I was, you know, I said, oh, and I said, okay, you know, bye-bye. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. See if I shut this thing off, if it's running. Uh, I'm